Um, and I'll put out support hours in the um, chat as well. If you ever have any issues, run into any concerns, please feel free to give us a call on support. Support is available seven days a week, to, um, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time, seven days a week. And then we also have email support as well. And then we have a Facebook user group if you all aren't um, uh, members in that. And that uh, group provides a lot of different resources, utilize the search tool just to stay up to date on different um, releases and updates, et cetera. And I'll put all of those resources and links to those resources um, in the chat. Um, with TouchFix, I also support our social media, um, as well as our um, um, upcoming um, newsletter that we'll be sending out. And I'll put um, resources to um, everything that I mentioned um, in the chat. And if DJ is ready, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Tia. Um, again, we're here for you guys. We, we're going to try to show you how to like set up an event and how to troubleshoot simple, simple techniques to troubleshoot. There's a lot of people um, out there using TouchPix. TouchPix is uh, the most heavily used 360 app uh, that's been out on iOS for quite some time. We are the first to do it on the iOS uh, outside the PC software. And we have a lot of users. So uh, I definitely want people, I want to encourage people to learn as much as you can. I want people to actually uh, do a lot of testing yourself. I think testing is key in the sense of getting familiar with the software. Uh, you probably are in the groups. And if you're not, we do encourage you to go on the groups, but also take the content in the group by other users with a grain of salt, meaning there's a lot of users that are brand new, right? And based on the fact that we have high number of users, there's some users that are going to report some, some fishy stuff with touch picks, right? And it's not necessarily true. Uh, a lot of what happens with touch picks is user error. Things get forgotten really quickly, turning on Wi-Fi, turning on Bluetooth, uh, little simple techniques uh, that will help you conduct a, an event accordingly. It just, there's, just, um, there's just so many different layers to it. So an example is turning on Wi-Fi. An example is turning on Bluetooth. Another example uh, can also be your sharing station. If you forget to um, turn off the screen saver, the battery life protector, right? If, you're, if your sharing station falls asleep, it's gonna lose its connection and you're not gonna be receiving the videos as it should. So again, this, this webinar is designed for people jumping on or curious about touch picks. We hope to provide you with as much information as possible, but also don't feel, don't feel um, like you can't ask questions. We'll definitely, I uh, try to take some time for questions. We have a very small group and, uh, you know, we definitely want to, we want to make you guys feel comfortable. And like Tia said, she's going to put a wealth of knowledge inside the chat. Go ahead and follow the chat room. There is a seven day support. Um, you will talk with somebody live in person. So that's kind of what sets us apart. Again, a lot of people say, well, TouchPix is a little too expensive for me. We're going to go over some pricing stuff. But I need everybody to really um, do your due diligence, research, uh, not only research us, research other apps. Aside from that, don't only research prices, research in the event that you have to add a second or third event, right? Uh, with touch picks is basically you either get it on a weekly basis, a, month, a monthly basis, or a yearly basis. And it's a flat fee. With other apps that are, you know, trying to catch up to what we're doing, they'll charge you a, you know, a per event fee. You have two, three bookings. All of a sudden, they want to get a piece of that pie and charge you extra for each additional booking. We don't do it that way. We just have a flat fee. Whether you use it or not, again, this is a subscription app, and we just want to better equip you uh, with just some knowledge on how to use it correctly. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. As many of you can see, I'm using a iPhone that I'm screen mirroring, right? And I do that, that way you guys can follow along and make sure that, you know, um, you guys fully understand how to load effects and stuff like that. But because I haven't used a specific phone uh, since the last webinar, and I think there's a new release of the app, 
or a new update, I should say, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So for people that don't know how to remove the app, all you have to do is hold down the icon. You're going to get this menu that says remove app, and I'm going to go ahead and delete it. If you're a legit subscriber, once you, once you delete it, it's going to say if you want to keep subscription on, right? Uh, I have a special version of the app, so it doesn't ask me all these intricate questions, but if you're deleting the app and it's asking you to keep subscription, yes, keep your subscription active and ongoing, okay? So after you delete the app, I'm gonna go over to my Apple App Store here, and I'm gonna go ahead and type in TouchPix. As soon as I can see the um, search bar, here we go. So I'm gonna type in TouchPix, hit search, and this ensures me that I will have the latest version. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the cloud. Look at that, a five-star rating with over 2000 reviews. That's super awesome. And we thank everybody that uses the app and we just wanna enhance your experience. And this is why we offer seven day support. We offer bilingual English and Spanish support. Um, you know, we, we do a lot as far as innovation and trying to get stuff out there. But today we're gonna to keep it very basic. I typically do iPhone uh, tutorials. Today we're gonna to mess with the GoPro. Haven't done a GoPro session in a while, but if you're an iPhone user, don't be alarmed. The steps are identical. The, there's actually about two or three added steps with the GoPro, uh, but I'll let you know when those steps come into play. The steps are, are, are very identical if you're using an iPhone, okay? So now that it says open, I'm gonna go ahead and open the app. And once you download it for the first time, it's always gonna ask for permissions. It's very important for you guys to allow the app and give the app these permissions. They have to do with the functionality and how it shares stuff, specifically with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, network, uh, allow it to save on your device as a backup measure as far as into your camera roll, it'll do that, but don't be alarmed. It's not gonna save everything there permanently. It just temporarily stores uh, into your camera roll as a, as a safety precaution to make sure that you're capturing everything. At the very end, when you close an event, it's gonna ask you if you want to, to delete all the videos from your cam camera roll, then you can delete them when you ensure that they're up in your web gallery. So I'm going a little bit off, you know, going ahead here, but I'll explain all of these steps to you. So don't feel so overwhelmed, okay? So once you open up TouchPix, you have a few choices. You can actually try TouchPix for free uh, by tapping any of the uh, top two choices, whether it be 360 Spinner, or photo boot, those are test events. That's for you to try without having to commit and buy a subscription. But please be aware that if you do try it, it'll work. However, it's not gonna send out text messages and it's not gonna send out emails because those cost money. When you pay for a subscription, that's already added into your subscription price. So everything else will work. The, the final output will be watermarked uh, until you're ready, but at the same time, it's gives you a good idea of how, how to work TouchPix, right? If you've never used TouchPix before, maybe that link on YouTube that's in the middle of the screen may be helpful if you're gonna watch a full tutorial on how to set up your first event. But if you're gonna buy TouchPix and you're not sure which package to get, you're gonna see this last uh, tab here that says subscriptions. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on it. And this is where you make the purchase for TouchPix. You're offered three different options. One option being uh, a weekly option for $49.99. Monthly option, $139.99, which is a little bit of a cost savings from the weekly. And obviously you're gonna get a best bang for your buck if you go yearly. Uh, for people on this call and uh, you're not sure which direction you're gonna get into, I'm gonna recommend that you um, consider yearly. I think we're able to do a $7.99 price this coming month or actually in a few weeks now because we're going to be showcasing uh, every so often we do uh, exhibit at events. One, we do the big photo booth expo in Las Vegas. Uh, we've also been doing the Chicago, the DJ Marquee show in Chicago. So we're going to be in Chicago 
Um, you guys might want to type in Google and I'll show you, um, I might do it for you a little bit later just to show you what it's about and who's going to be there. Uh, you guys might want to type in the marquee DJ show in Chicago. We'll be there from, I believe it starts in June 11th. Uh, it's for it's for a few days during the week, maybe from the 11th through the 13th or 14th. It's a during the week show because, uh, quite frankly, our profession, we have events on the weekends. We can't do shows on the weekends because we're normally working events. So we do a show during the week for the event professionals that can make it out there and fly back with enough time to conduct some events. So during this time, during this year, It'll be down to $7.99. Um, we will be releasing a promo code. You don't have to go to the show to get the $7.99 price. We'll release a promo code and give you the ability on how to make that purchase. Uh, or the price may be adjusted on the Apple App Store. We're still um, not knowing exactly how we're going to do that. So that's kind of where we're at with the pricing structure. If you guys have any questions with the pricing structure before I move forward. Does that sound pretty straightforward? Got it. Okay. No questions. So what I do want to say with the pricing structure before I kind of uh, step away from it is that TouchPix is a subscription-based app, meaning that if you do purchase TouchPix through your Apple App Store, TouchPick doesn't receive, or we don't handle money directly. Everything goes through the Apple App Store. Everything that you purchase here from the App Store goes through, goes through Apple. No different than um, like Spotify or Apple Music or, or anything like that, right? So be aware that if there is a financial complaint, you're going to contact the Apple App Store. They're going to ask you for your Apple ID to make sure that you are who you say you are. And then you can definitely, uh, you know, uh, either request, you know, a fix or whatever the case may be, they will handle it if it involves money. When it comes to the software troubleshooting, we are your guys. So you're going to call the support line. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So what I want to start with that, since I just downloaded a fresh version of TouchPix, I see it on my screen. I'm going to go over and switch off to my computer because I uh, always want to start with a computer and as far as setting up an event. And I'm going to see if I can show you a screen. Here we go. This is my computer and this is a TouchPix website. So, uh, um, We recommend that when you're starting off an event, you're going to start it off from, we don't care if it's a PC or a Mac, you can do it from both. What it should not be is a Google Chrome book or from your iPad uh, initially. Pretty soon you guys will be able to do everything from an iPad or an iPhone. We're not there yet. We're just trying to fix our designer to make sure that it's mobile friendly. And we encourage everybody to when setting up your events, just do it before you leave your house from uh, a computer. You don't need to take a computer with you to an event. All of this should be done uh, prior to you arriving at, at an event. Okay. So with that being said, what I like to show everybody most of the time is my dirty desktop here. Let me see if I can minimize some windows. Okay. So I'm going to show you my desktop. And you guys can see that I'm working with a you guys can see that, right? Yeah, I'm working with a PC. Um, I, the reason I show this is because I want you guys to kind of get into the pattern of being organized, right? Because when I first started doing photo booths, I, I wasn't the most organized person. I'm getting a lot better. I'm not saying I'm very organized now, but with certain computer software, you need to know where things are. Uh, for example, um, I like to, you know, touch pick my touch pick related stuff. What I like to do here is make a blank folder and I call it touch picks files, right? So in this file folder, you're going to see what I call my logos. You're going to see my music files. You're going to see um, maybe some overlays if I paid somebody to make these for me. Because uh, some events I do pay somebody to make them for me to look a little bit more professional. 
Uh, those are optional. You don't need to, but in the event that you get to that uh, point where you feel like you're better off having somebody design them for you, you know, just put them all in one folder. That way, when you're building your event, you know exactly how to get access to that. The other thing that I've been showing everybody is kind of my uh, my workflow with certain things, right? Um, I always tell people get organized. You know, don't have stuff in a bin. Uh, nothing wrong with that. You know, I do have some stuff in the bin, but I try to like really um, get organized in the sense of knowing when I go to my event, I have everything from my checklist. So I like to show this picture because I do have a small bag and I don't expect everybody to have the exact same thing I do. And be mindful, I've been doing this for a long time before even 360s uh, were kind of uh, as easy as they are to do now. I mean, Back then, you had to piece software together for it to work. And now, you know, it seems like touch picks and others and, and you know, others have picked up to um, being able to execute the game plan. But touch picks by far are, uh, supersedes everything else that I've seen from iOS. So with that being said, I do have a bag that, you know, has some backup equipment because with technology, sometimes things goes a, a little weird. And whether my iPhone, you know, falls and breaks, I want to be able to make sure I have something else I can throw on the spinner. Uh, anything that's going to prevent me from giving money back to the client and, and fulfilling my job obligation is a plus. So always get into the habit of at least trying to get one backup device. Who cares what that is? I don't care if it's an iPad. I don't care if it's an extra iPhone or a GoPro. Just have one backup device. That's the best advice I can give you because every so often, you know, technology goes weird. I don't know, your battery all of a sudden dies and it doesn't want to charge on your iPhone uh, or your GoPro for that matter. You're going to need something else to make sure you can execute the job. So this bag here, as you can see, holds a lot of, a lot of equipment and that's why I show it. It holds a couple of GoPros, it holds a DSLR, it holds a router that I use for scan picks, which is part of touch picks to share without the need of any type of internet connection, right? And then I have two iPhones. I don't expect everybody to have this, right? You can definitely start with an iPhone and maybe with an iPad and you'll be fine, but just know, have a gig bag where everything's tucked away neatly and you know where everything is and away you go. I even have an extra like plastic uh, phone holder in the event that I need it because somebody breaks it, right? We've all seen those videos of people stepping off the 360 and all of a sudden the arm breaks or a bracket, you know, breaks and stuff like that. So always just think about that. Uh, be a couple steps ahead of everything else, right? Because you never want to be in the position where you want to give money back. Uh, the other thing that I want to show is that, you know, this bag actually is a camera bag that I use actually holds an iPad. So, you know, it holds everything together and I'm not having to worry about, you know, keeping things in, in separate tubs or bags or stuff like that. The top, I don't have a picture of it, but I have most of my USB-C wires and a lot of the wires that I need for me to make a connection. So that's why I show it. Again, you can, you know, you don't necessarily need to have the exact same equipment I do, but as, as being organized, I recommend you guys get a bag. Everything else is logos, music tracks, um, PNG overlays, and I'll explain the, uh, what they are, but they're all in the TouchPix files folder. From there, I'm gonna go over to touchpix.com, right? Let's go back into TouchPix. I'm gonna go to a new page here. I'm gonna type in touchpix.com because that's where we need to be at right now. So this is TouchPix in a nutshell, right? This is our website. So if you haven't registered for TouchPix, you need to register for an account, right? You're gonna have to come over here where it says log in. If you don't have an account, you're gonna have to register for one. I recommend you put your first and last name. The most important thing you can do is your email address. Use an email address that's associated to your Apple ID um, email. If you don't know what that is, I'll show you exactly what that is right now. Give me one sec. I'm going to come back in with my phone because I want, you know, for those of you that are visual learners, I want you guys to understand that it's very important to actually recognize where your Apple ID is located and 
how to obtain that information. So in this specific case, what I just did now is I'm screen mirroring into my phone again. There's my phone. And I'm gonna go over to settings from my phone. And if you look at the top banner, right? The top banner, I named it, because these phones that I use are what I call dummy phones. I don't have any, any. I don't have, I don't think I have any cell signal with them. I have them on airplane mode, as you can see. Uh, airplane mode is fine if you leave Wi-Fi on, but I just use these for my business. So as you see the top banner, it just has my business name. So if I click on a top banner that says Central Cal Photo Booth, right? you're going to see this email address. So this email address is my Apple ID email address, right? So when you register for a TouchPix account, make sure that you register with a Apple ID email address that you created. Now, if this was my personal Apple ID email address, I probably wouldn't use it. And I recommend you guys going against that, right? Because uh, eventually, if this goes well for you and you start making some money and you start hiring employees and now you want your employees to go out there and represent your business and your 360, you know, you don't want to give them devices that have access to your personal data or your personal information because you're using your personal Apple ID. So what I would do is probably create a new Apple ID that you can sign in and out of, right? And from that business Apple ID, I would buy my touch picks subscription from that business Apple ID to make sure, you know, everything, um, just to make sure everything's good, you know, it's not interfering with your plan, with your personal one. Uh, if you're wondering how to sign out of your old Apple ID, you can come all the way to the bottom and it says sign out. You could log in with a different one if you want. This just happens to be all of my devices that are attached to my business account. As you can see, my wife's not happy. I spent a lot of money, but other than that, um, just kind of wanted to show you guys a visual on how to access your Apple ID, okay? You guys have any questions up to then? Cool. So now what I'm gonna do is go back um, to my computer. I, I have a question, but it's, it's not pertaining to what you're talking about. I'll wait and see if you're gonna come across okay. that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for doing that. Okay, so now that I have a, uh, my login information, I'm gonna go ahead and log into TouchPix. And what I'm gonna do here is show you around real quick. There are really two areas that you need to focus on. There's, a, there's this um, icon up here that says create an event. This is where you're gonna go to when you're creating an event. And then this is a designer area where you're gonna go to actually design or upload your, whatever it is that you're gonna use for that specific design. Uh, we already went over pricing. There is some special things here in shop that I'm not going to cover. If you guys uh, have time, go into our shop. We do sell special effects that are ready to go. It is a one-time fee, but you can use them forever as long as you use touch picks. But you can go ahead and, and uh, see if those are a good fit for you. As far as the support, you, there's a lot of uh, information here as well. There's some tutorials, and most importantly, uh, there's downloads. You can download, if you're not only using TouchPix for 360 and using it for iPad services, for iPad photo booths, you can download free um, uh, print servers to make sure that you're able to print, and then you can download uh, the template um, the template files so you can kind of uh, design around them. So. That's for the photo booth side. So TouchPix does more than just 360. It's just today's webinar just covers 360. So let's go back over to what it says create event. Uh, you have two options. Option one is a custom event, which is what I'm going to be covering. Option two, I'm going to click on it and just go over it real quick because I need to. Uh, option two is for people that are just kind of wanting to cheat a little, right? You don't have time. You have an event in 15 minutes and you want to be up and going. You don't have time to collect logos. You don't have time to collect your own music. You don't have time for any of that. You just want to go, right? So it's going to ask you a series of questions or statements. You're just going to, it's basically a three-click process. Depending on what you have, it'll set up an event for you. It will have TouchPix branding. It will have TouchPix music that was automatically selected, but you'll be able to um, test out any of these events as normal, right? 
Uh, the, a reason I don't like to show it this way is because I like people to learn how to do it from scratch. The more you know about the software, the less problems you will have out in the field. And that's what a lot of people miss. A lot of people just want information in the sense of how do I do this? Can you do it for me? And then they'll call the support line and say, hey, I need you to do this for me. That's not what we do. Our support line is to support you as far as making sure that you have your settings correctly. Everything should work as it should, but we're not there to design something for you. We're not there to upload music for you, right? That's all your responsibility as a business owner. So that's kind of why I say learn the software. There's too many shortcuts being taken and you can see that in our group. There's a lot of people that have poor quality, a lot of people that have good quality, and then there's people that have great quality. Know where you're going to fit in. Know what you're going for, right? There's nothing wrong with any of those, but just there's levels to this. And I want people to understand that in order to achieve the top level consideration, top level money, you got to put in some work and learning this. Okay, so now I'm going to back up and go over to... Um, create a custom event, because we're gonna create a custom event from scratch, right? So what TouchPix is, is when you hit create a custom event, uh, it's basically a long form. You can, you know, this form works the same in setting up a regular photo booth or for 360 slow motion video, it's the same exact form. You're telling it what functions you want TouchPix to actually activate. So. Like any form, we're going to start from the very top and we're going to go all the way to the very bottom. And I'm going to explain to you every uh, piece of it. And then from there, we're going to activate an event. Again, for people that joined late, because we're up at 25 now, uh, we're, we're doing a GoPro uh, event today because I've been doing iPhone events for the last few weeks. And I just wanted to switch it up. There's no difference really if you're uh, using an iPhone. There's actually more steps to the GoPro and I'll make I'll make it known when the GoPro settings are uh, going to be activated or they're, they're extra. So you know as an iPhone user, you don't have to go that far. So I'm going to name this event and like I always do, I'm going to name it um, webinar and I'm going to name it, uh, I'm going to give it today's date. That'll just identify what this event is for me. It's not going to get lost with all my other events. I know exactly it's for a webinar that we did on today's date. The language is English, country is USA. My countdown, right? So my countdown, I'm going to set this to two. Like any other photo booth, when you've ever used a photo booth, there's like a four or five second countdown before it actually takes the picture. Well, this is the same thing, except that I want a um, small countdown number because I'm not taking pictures. I'm recording a video. I'm just going to allow the system to count down from two, one, then record. It's never like a, a, an immediate record. You have to at least give it a numerical value of one if you don't want a countdown. But two, one is generally my pattern is what I use. Um, so you can try a longer countdown or you can just kind of do things uh, your way or whatever makes sense for you and your business. So that's the countdown. I'm also going to click this box that says beep sound. Beep sound just means that for every second that's in here, it's going to beep. This may or may not be uh, relevant in the sense of most of us do events in loud uh, areas. So you might not even hear anything. Uh, and you're, you don't need to hear anything. This is just an extra um you know, it's, it's just an extra setting that you have in the event that you want to, the reassurance uh, of, uh, you know, second countdown going down. The mirror overlay preview, I'm going to go ahead and leave this disabled. This is a photo booth function. Uh, typically, you enable it for photo booths. Um, the quickest way to describe what this feature does is if you stand in front of the camera on a photo booth and you're lined up on the you're physically lined up on the right side. The mirror overlay preview will mirror that effect. If you, uh, if you select it, it'll actually, um, it'll have you lined up on the left side. Um, so this is not needed. Go ahead and uh, deselect this tab here. You're not gonna need that. We are going over a, a GoPro setup. So 
I'm going to go do a GoPro setup with the same thing as I would do with an iPhone. So this next question is asking uh, whether I want to use a front camera or rear camera. So you may be thinking, well, why do you want to use the rear camera, not the front, since the front has a screen? Well, the reason is because the rear camera has the best video resolution. It's the best camera. It has a better, uh, better lens. It has the uh, ultra wide lens. It also has better image stabilization than any front camera. So naturally you're gonna to wanna to capture people with the best camera your device can handle. And the front camera does work, but it's just, there's a notable difference in quality when you're using the front or the rear camera. I'm gonna go ahead and select the rear camera. Even though I'm doing the GoPro se uh, section, there's nothing wrong with me telling the software I'm using the rear camera. And when I activate the GoPro in the software, you will see when I make that transition. So camera exposure, I'm gonna leave that enabled. Camera exposure just means that, you know, maybe you weren't satisfied, your photos are coming in a little dark. Uh, camera exposure menu will, uh, you know, will allow you to adjust lighting as needed. Uh, a lot of people start off with 360s, they don't buy adequate lighting and some of their videos are coming out too dark, right? The exposure menu will let you go in there and configure your settings by, uh, increasing the ISO um, and, uh, you know, you can, or exposure, uh, it'll give you a clearer picture. It'll allow you to adjust it. So it's more of a preference to leave it on because you can compensate for uh, darker dim rooms if you don't have appropriate lighting. Okay. So the other part to this would be uh, QR app protection. I'm not worried about this. This is a photo booth feature that protects other guests from accessing the back end. Leave this um, not selected. Because this is also a photo booth uh, app application, it's gonna have printing functions. And in this case, I'm not interested because we're capturing videos, not photos. So as I scroll down, it's going down to where it says functions. I'm, I'm not wanting photos, I'm not wanting boomerangs, I'm not wanting GIFs, and I'm not doing videos, meaning, meaning um, TouchPix also works great to record videos. And an example for that would be, uh, you know, you're at a wedding and somebody may be using TouchPix for a video confession booth, meaning that the guests come into the booth, wish the bride and groom, you know, uh, some, give them some advice, give them some happy wishes. And people make money that way because you can send, uh, you can actually edit all the videos, send it to the bride and groom as a video recorder. But that's not what we're doing. We're focused strictly for slow-mo and I'm only gonna rec um, select slow-mo. So next down the list is slow-mo record time. This is the time that the actual camera starts recording the length of time, right? So in this case, it's set by default to 4.5 seconds, and I'm okay with that. I'm gonna record for 4.5 seconds. Uh, typically that will render you know, anywhere between 13, 14, 15 second video without like any outro or promo item. Uh, but for me, that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as default. I typically go between 4.5 or five as my recording time. Uh, but again, you're going to do whatever fits your business and whatever you feel looks best for you. Um, I do want the slow-mo boomerang active. What this effect does is when the video starts, finishes recording and it goes through a playback, it'll play back, right? But right when it reaches the ending of the video, it flips it in reverse and does a video boomerang. So the slow-mo boomerang actually is a video boomerang, okay? Right next to that section is an uh, area called, uh, basically it's a file uploader. There's three areas where you can upload a file. This is one of them. So if you guys remember that folder that I made on my desktop, I, I um, went ahead and uh, put two tracks in there. Those are tracks that I got from the, from the internet from a royalty free music site. And Tia put a lot of links for royalty free music sites. Give me one second here. I need to I need to open something. Okay. Yeah, so 
for the for the audio, you know, I get a common question. We get a common question saying, "Well, DJ, how can we, you know, download a music track from YouTube and uh, use it for touch picks?" Well, that's a great question. And uh, Google and YouTube probably have a lot of different answers for that. As a legitimate business, we can't tell you how to download music illegally, but what we can give you is ways to. Uh, download music legally and Tia is going to fill the chat box with recommendations for royalty free music sites and these sites are not mainstream music they're not top 40 but there's their music uh, genres that sound very similar for 360 I think it serves a great purpose uh, last thing you want is uh, get hit by a lawsuit and get shut down it's happened before so as a company a legitimate company we just can't show you how to do that if you want to learn how to do it on your own by all means all, the only thing that i would suggest that you pay attention to if you want to explore that avenue is that touchpick only accepts mp3 files right and it cannot exceed 512 megabytes it'll take any mp3 that doesn't exceed 512 megabytes right and uh, just to give you more clarity, people say, well, DJ, I pay for Apple Music. I have a subscription, so I'm paying for a service. Yes, you're absolutely right. You're paying Apple Music a service to download music for personal use. The minute you start using it for business use, you know, that, that agreement is no longer valid, right? Uh, the other thing is with Apple Music is Apple Music, even if you download it, it's not going to give you an MP3 file. They're big on anti-piracy and copyright protection. So their files are called M4A files, which works with Apple products uh, uh, you know, heavily, but it won't work with touch pixels. We only take MP3s, okay? As I scroll down, there's a screen flash area. I leave this disabled. This is a photo booth feature. The screen just mimics a flash by flashing light when it's used as an iPad booth. As I'm scrolling down to the timeout area, just know that these numbers represent seconds. Uh, typically for a photo booth, if you hover over the question mark, it'll explain to you exactly what this feature does. It's for editing. Sometimes when people use it as a photo booth, they want to edit their photos. They want to, uh, you know, add effects. They want to draw to them. I'm not interested in that in video recording. I'm going to go ahead and, and click, uh, click on the number and type zero. The thank you screen, I'm not really interested in the thank you screen popping up and hanging, you know, kind of delaying the process. Same thing goes for props because we're recording videos. We're not recording uh, pictures or we're not capturing pictures where it allows you to uh, kind of uh, manipulate some props. The only thing that I'm leaving is the sharing, right? The sharing does need to be at least six seconds, but I'm going to leave it at 12. Uh, the sharing is important because that is what's going to allow you to share your content. If you don't give it a number, if you put it at zero, it's quickly going to disappear and it's going to look like it's a software glitch. But I assure you, it's not a software glitch. It's just you not knowing that there needs to be some time in the sharing portion and the recommendations, either six or 12. So please leave it at 12 and you'll be fine. Now, the way we share our media, we give you a lot of different ways of sharing. I think it's too much sometimes, but today we're just gonna focus on email. We're gonna go ahead and allow email. We're gonna disable Facebook. Um, we'll leave WhatsApp. We'll leave SMS means text messaging. I'm not interested in Twitter and I'm not interested in this copy feature. Airdrop QR code in general. That's all fine. <clears throat> Airdrop is usually the best way to share. It shares whether you have internet or not. But SMS and email are actually good options. Um, even if you're in a location where there's no internet and somebody walks up to the device and punches in the, you know, pulls up their video, sends themselves a, a text. Um, if there's no Wi-Fi, that text is not going to be sent out right away. But what our software does do, it memorizes the text in the video. So whenever it is that you do connect to a better connection, it'll start sending off automatically. 
Okay. Jerry, I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, out of all of those options, which one is the best one where the quality is high? Because I find that anything that's sent through WhatsApp, it kind of distorts the uh, resolution of um, the image. Well, I could assure you, you know, the quality is the same for all. What I could, I, what I could explain to that is that there's, there's a variable in here that's pretty important. So, if it goes through WhatsApp or the text messaging, right? The quality is the same because we're not actually sending you the video file through WhatsApp or through text message. What we're sending you is actually a link where that file lives up in the cloud. So if you download the that file and that link, right, and your video playback, for whatever reason, the internet's slow, it's going to look choppy, right? But once it's downloaded onto your actual device and you actually saved it onto your camera roll, you're gonna see that that video should be exactly uh, in high quality, in the same quality that you recorded it on. Sometimes people get choppy playbacks because again, it's a playback. You're using, you're using some type of Wi-Fi or internet signal to play it back. What you gotta do first is ensure that you save it onto your device and it's already, it's already saved on your camera roll. Do the playback from the camera roll. That's that doesn't require any internet, and you'll be fine. Did that make sense for you? Yeah. So just tell, make sure to tell the uh, users that they have to download it onto their camera roll. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we get that a lot though, because people say, "Well, the quality is not the same." Well, yeah, because we're talking about two different things. You're actually you're taken to a link where the highest quality video is there. But people are doing the playback version, version, uh, you know, which is which is uh, relying on internet resources. And if you're in a poor area, then yeah, you're gonna get whatever that area is allowing you to connect to. But once it's downloaded, they'll have it on their camera roll at the very same resolution as to the capture image. So, um, yeah, just an extra step. But yeah, you know, you may see that AirDrop for that reason works great too, because AirDrop is just, just super fast and it delivers the file at its original content and it's already on your phone. So it uses a different mechanism to deliver that. But a lot of people don't have uh, iPhones as well. You know, some people still have Androids. And for that, you know, we've created this QR code and general way to share and mainly for, for Android users, because typically the majority of users have shared through AirDrop of some sort or text messaging. So these are your options. So with that being said, the one that I wanted to explain that's super important is this download option, right? This needs to be checked off. I always just want to tell the developer just to make that a non-negotiable, to just leave that enabled, right? So the reason why this is important, I just explained that we don't send the actual video via text message. We send a link, right? So if people use iPhones and they click on a link, by default, the Safari web browser is the one that opens up, right? Safari web browser natively doesn't come with like download buttons. You have to actually implement that download button into the web browser. So by you checking this download button, Whoever gets the link that has an iPhone will be able to download it. If you accidentally leave this checked, unchecked, uh, and you will see that when you open it on the Safari web browser, there's not going to be a download button and you won't be able to download the content. So this is pretty important. Just common practice, just leave it, leave it activated, even if you don't need it, but you know, it'll definitely save you in a pinch. Um, the next thing here is a sharing screen. I'm not sh worried about the sharing screen. Uh, if you hover over the question marks, it gives you examples of what that feature does. It's an editing to draw on the picture, add effects, stickers, and text. This is more of a photo booth feature. It's not needed. The other part to this is this in-app gallery. This is extremely important. If this is off, you won't be able to share. This is another item that I wanna share with the developer to, to have it as a non-negotiable and just leave it on permanently, right? Because if you don't have this in-app gallery, you will not be able to share the content. So this is important. Uh, additionally, this is the way the sharing stations communicate. So this needs to be on. Uh, 
okay? Uh, these boxes here are text box boxes that you can change. Uh, this is ways of branding. Uh, for example, if somebody sends themselves an email, you can make the subject heading on the email be the name of your business. I'm typing in XYZ photo booth, just pretending that that's a legitimate business. And you can change any of these greetings. And I typically just write one greeting, but I'll use it in all four boxes. So I'll, I'll say, um, thank you for using XYZ 360. And I won't even use periods actually. I'll just say for bookings, call. I'll use a numerical number, but notice that I'm not using any dashes. I'm not using, I'm gonna actually, I was about to put my real number here. Up a makeup, made, made up number, here we go. So I don't use any dashes. I don't use any separators because I find that those get uh, red flagged. Uh, this will come up as a hyperlink anyways. I've used it, I've tested it. So uh, so I'll put something generic, like thank you for using XY, XYC360 for bookings call. And then I will indicate, please see attached file because the file link is typically placed right below this text. So what I do here is I'll go ahead and copy this same, uh, this whole text I just typed in. And I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna hit copy and I'm gonna use it for all these same areas here. Even if the, that's how I do it, makes things easier. And then I'm gonna hit as a main subject, X, Y, Z for the booth, right? You brand it as best as possible. As we scroll down here, we're in the prop area. Again, this is a 360 video, so I'm not worried about props and I'm gonna leave it at no props. <clears throat> branding area, this is important. So this branding area, you can name it, whatever you want, your business typically. And the app will allow you to brand the interface. It'll not only allow you to brand the actual interface on the iPhone or iPad, but also if you're using an Apple TV box, it'll allow you to brand it on the screen, right? Even your web gallery. So at the end of the day, when you give your client your web gallery, it's not gonna say that this web gallery is coming from TouchPix. It'll say whatever logo you put in here, it'll be re reflective of your business. So it's a way to brand it with your business not letting no, you know, not giving your guest any idea of what you're doing or what you're using for software. So you won't see any touch picks related uh, messages in there. So for the in-app logo, I'm gonna explain to you where that goes. The in-app logo, it typically goes on um, your sharing station as a top icon, and it actually goes onto the Apple TV as a icon, um, at the front and center, top middle. It's a small thumbnail of whatever logo it is. If you look at these uh, file sizes, it'll tell you that it can exceed four megabytes and it needs to be JPEG, PNG. Please, by having, make yourself uh, accustomed to using PNG files. PNG files just means that they're transparent. There's no background to them. That's how overlays are made and make it easier on yourself and don't mix and match because if you do mix and match, you are going to commit a mistake eventually by, uh, you know, creating or grabbing a JPEG file for your overlay. You're not going to, it's not going to work for you because the overlay um, is not a transparent overlay, which, which is P PNG. Okay. So what I'm gonna do just to show you, I actually use the same logo in all three locations. Whatever logo I put in that background, that means it's sitting behind the TouchPix interface. So as your guests walk up to the 360, they're gonna see your logo or your branding on your iPad or iPhone, right? And you're able to do that by loading up a logo here in the app background category. Whatever logo you load up in web background, 
it's going to show up in your at the back end of the web gallery. So when you give the clients that link, you know, it looks it makes you look a lot more professional because you have your logos blasted on that gallery link. Right. Um, so this is how you do it. So if I hit choose file, a window pops up for me, it's automatically going to that tech picks folder. But for you, because this is your first time using, you actually have to go over to your it's probably going to go into your downloads folder, but I'm here on the left hand side. I say, look, I want from now on, I want everything that I open through TouchPix to open up in this TouchPix files folder. I look for my logo. That's a PNG. Let's use this uh, TouchPix logo. It's a PNG size logo. You know, make sure that these dimensions is what I would recommend you guys start using. Anything below 3,000 by 3,000, you will be good, right? And those are pixels. So 3,000 by 3,000 pixels, you will be good. Once you pick your logo, make sure it's a PNG. That's what I always do because that's what I want you guys to get in the practice of doing that and hit open. And I'm going to use the same logo for the app background. Hit open same logo for the web gallery background you guys can see this looks like it has a white background but it doesn't because it's a png file right you'll see later how it looks on on the actual screen so i have three files here there's an attract screen function i'm not going to go over it uh the track screen is just that it uh it's a screen that when your photo booth sits on idle and nobody's using it, whatever file or picture you put in here will be playing over and over again, right? It's almost like a screensaver. So since I have my same logo in all three locations, I'm okay. I need you guys to also pay attention. If you guys are using your logo for whatever reason, your logo has a white background and you leave this text and buttons to white, you won't be able to see um, based on, you know, white clashes with white and it's going to camouflage with one another. So be, be cautious with that and just make sure that if you do got to change the color, you tap on this square, move your cursor anywhere inside the color palette, select your color and be done with it. next section is uh, motion trigger motion trigger doesn't really apply for a lot of people if you have an arc of view it does apply for you because now you can control that spinner with um you know with the motion trigger and there's a specific part um there's a specific part in the app too that will allow you to make that sync but <clears throat> not only that if you have a automatic spinner doesn't have to be Orca View, can be any other brand, and you want to do it with this motion trigger here on the web interface, you can enable it. What this motion trigger does, it uses your iPhone, right? Everybody who has an iPhone, the actual iPhones have a built-in GPS sensor in it. So by you activating the motion trigger, whenever the arm, whenever you press start on your remote and the arm starts moving, the software will automatically detect that the iPhone's moving and it'll start a session without being touched just motion will trigger that session to be on. Some people like it, some people do not. It's really up to you. Just test it away. I've used it both ways. Uh, if, you, if you can get used to the motion trigger, I think it's a great tool. Um, again, really, really a preference type thing. So I'm not gonna select motion trigger for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, but that's an option for you guys to use at home. As far as external screen, I'm not going to go into an external screen today with an Apple TV either. Uh, but if you guys want to learn a little bit more about it, just look at my other tutorials on YouTube and scroll towards the end of the tutorial. And I do a little segment on uh, the Apple TV as a slideshow or Apple TV as a live view kind of recorder, right? So what I mean by Apple TV is not an actual TV that's made by Apple. It's a little box that's similar to the Google Chromecast or the Amazon Fire Sticks, right? And it lets your iPad kind of screen mirror to that platform. Uh, and it works pretty, uh, it's pretty stable. And it's a, you know, it's a, it can be used as a upcharge for big slideshows. Um, you know, always try to upcharge, never throw this type of service in for free. But I just wanted to share that that's what it does, okay? 
Hi, DJ. Right. Sorry, quick question. For I, I know you're not covering it, but I did use the external screen. And for some reason, when um, the guests were on the booth, it wasn't being reflected on the screen. It was just counting down. Okay. Do you know why that is? Yeah. So first, let's start with what device are you using your external screen from? What's from us. Is it an iPhone or an iPad? Yeah, iPhone, iPhone. Okay. And your external screen is, is set to live view? So when you say live view, I, I, I selected that, yes. So, the external screen so right now, live. if I hit enable, you're, you're in the external session and you're set to live view? I'm not too sure if it was. Is that what it needs to look like? So right here, if you look at my screen, yeah. I hit enabled and make sure that live view is enabled, right? But also a key thing that a lot of people do um, that causes a similar symptom as you are describing is that when you activate the external screen, when you activate TouchPix, it's gonna ask you to download a, a little file of resources. It absolutely needs to download that file for your live screen to work. A lot of people hit cancel and it doesn't, you know, they don't allow because for whatever reason, I'm not saying this is your case, but a lot of people hit cancel because they're in a hurry. They just want to get up and going. But by canceling those resources, you're basically canceling the ability to properly use the screen share on the Apple TV. So make sure that if you're using uh, external section, um, once, you, once you're ready to go with your app, make sure that you are allowing TouchPix to download that resource. It usually gives you a prompt that'll say uh, external resources. And you'll see like a little, a little uh, what is it, progress bar and means it's doing its thing. Uh, but I would also look at if Live View has been checked, right? I would also look at two other things. Make sure that if it's your iPhone or your iPad, make sure your iPhone is on the latest version of its operating system, their iOS. I'll show you how to do that in a, in a, in a minute. The other thing is um, make sure that TouchPix is on the latest version. So the way you do that, I'm going to just toggle away from this real quick because we're at the end anyways. Um, let me go in here real quick. Yeah, so see, this is kind of what I mean too. Uh, there are little intricacies that if you don't, if one is not done correctly, it can really affect how you work the app. and. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like too when it's gonna give you that prompt as far as uh, downloading the, the proper resources. So I'm going in now, right? First thing is first, I want you guys to make sure that to check to see if you're in the latest version, you guys need to go into your general settings, right? From your general settings, you're gonna go into general tab, which is right down here. And you're gonna go where it says software update. Right. And as you can see, I'm not on the latest version. They must have released a version. You know, I don't know when they, it was released, but it's telling me if it's telling me download and install, I'm not on the latest version. And that really sometimes can affect uh, the live view from working correctly or not. So make sure that this is up to par and you're good to go. The other thing with um, that I want to encourage you to check is also make sure that touch picks is is on the latest version. So by doing that, you can also go over back to the app store, even if you have TouchPix installed and then search for TouchPix, right? And if you're not on the latest version, you see where it says open, it'll say update. But I always do my due diligence and at least, you know, pull the screen down for, so I can refresh and make sure that it's synced up to the internet. And if it still says open, that means it's still on the latest version, or you can call us and we'll tell you what version number it needs to be. But those will be my troubleshooting steps for your specific issue. I think that um, I think that it'll work if you try any of these issues. But first, make sure you do have uh, external session and live view checked on. Thank and, you. And sorry, what's your YouTube page again? Uh, Tia, put it in the chat. It's, uh, I don't even know. I, I started I put it in the chat up. and um, remember we're going to try to avoid the interruptions. But the information is in the chat and I'll put it in again. Perfect. 
Okay, so as we move forward, so that's how you check that. So now I'm gonna go back over to TouchPix and we were at the bottom of the, um, we were at the bottom here where I was done. I'm gonna go ahead and enable it, even though I'm not gonna show you guys uh, how to sync it today. I will show you that little, the little uh, error or not error, the little warning that it tells you to download uh, the resources. So once I'm down here, I'm gonna hit, a, I agree. I'm gonna hit submit. It's gonna give me a QR code now. That's my QR code. That's what, I, that's what I'll need to actually, um, that's what I'll need to activate my event. But before I scan my event, what I wanna do is go over here to um, designer because now I wanna add the artwork. I wanna show you guys the new designer. This is the old designer. I mean, I'm just going to touch on this real quick before I go over to the new designer. The old designer is fairly, fairly simple to use. When you click on designer, you're going to want to make sure you go over to templates here on your top left hand side. And by default, it's going to take you to uh, slow mo overlays and it's going to give you five choices. All these choices are a little different. Template one is a uh, vertical template is very popular because it's Facebook Reels or Instagram. Uh, it'll definitely, it's kind of what's in right now, the, the vertical phone. And if you angle your arm accordingly and use that template, it, you have a good chance of achieving uh, the full body shot with the wide angle lens. So that's pretty popular. Template two has also been pretty popular. It's a square, it's very Instagram friendly. Uh, my favorite is template three. It has more of a wide angle of view. The reason why I like this uh, template is because it, when I look at it from a, uh, like a slideshow perspective, I take TVs out to my event. This template fills the screen pretty nicely, uh, almost, almost full screen, but not quite, but it's fills it in the sense that if I use template two or one, these two templates for me will not fill my screen. Template three or four will fill my screen and that's the look that I go for. Uh, but you know, you do whatever works best for you. For me, it's template three. So I'm gonna select template three by just clicking on it. And if I wanted to upload a custom design that somebody built for me, I want you guys to understand that if you guys go over to uploads here on the top left-hand side, and hover over the question mark under custom overlay, you're given all the sizes for every template right here. So if you get a designer and they're gonna ask you what, you know, what size should I make your template? Well, they, these are the sizes. For me, it's template three. This is my size in pixels. I'll shoot, shoot that over to my designer. He'll whip something up and send it my way. I'll download it onto my computer and place it in TouchPix files folder and I'm ready to go right? This is where you upload a custom template and I'm going to hit browse. And if you look right when I hit browse, it takes me back to the TouchPix files folder. Again, it's for organizational purposes. That's why I tell you, please just put everything in the central location. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on any of these. These are just simple borders, right? So it's right here on your lower left-hand side. Once I click on this design, it's gonna apply it over here to the silhouette. If I still wanted to add like my logo or a sticker or something just to brand my overlay, I can keep on adding stickers to it, right? I'm gonna use, for example, this TouchPix sticker, hit open. It's gonna place it on the top left-hand side. Once I see it, I'm gonna click on it and it throws it onto the screen and I can resize it. And I can keep on doing this all day. Like I can keep on adding and adding and adding if I want. If I wanted to add text, I can just click on this text and add some text, right? But I just wanted to show you this. This is the old designer. I wanted to show you in the event that you wanted to upload a custom design, that's how you do it, right? Um, the new designer, which I want to cover is same location, but it says new designer in beta, right? You click on that. It'll say log in, but once you're logged in, it'll keep you logged in. It's a lot simpler. It'll tell you, okay, what are you doing? Are you doing a photo or, or a, um, are you doing 
I'm sorry. It says, uh, are you using photos or videos? I'm doing a video. So now it's telling me, well, what template are you using? And I'm using template three, right? And now it's asking me, which event do I want this template to be added to? If you guys remember, I named this webinar with today's date so I could identify it real quick. So I'm using the webinar event, template three. And I'm gonna click here where it says use template. And this is the part that's gonna save you guys tons of money, right? Is this is my silhouette. So now what I wanna do is manage design. And now I wanna click on design library. So TouchPix has offered these for free for all TouchPix users right? If you lack in the design department like I do, I'm not a great designer, so I always have to kind of uh, pay somebody to do this, but they're offering you all of these designs for free, right? Uh, you can filter by, um, you can filter by any type of event, whether it be wedding, Halloween, baby shower, birthday party, Mardi Gras, Valentine's Day, gala, where it has designs for everything, basically, even holidays. Right, so go through, go through some of this list and pick any design that you want. And for example, let's just pick something pretty random here. Um, let me see. No, I don't like designs with huge borders. So maybe I'll try something that's a little transparent. Maybe I'll try, let's try this one here. And as you can see, it already added, it added this already, right? It added the, the nice uh, design, looks pretty professional, right? Now you're wondering, well, what do I do about text? Well, that's the easy part. On the left-hand side, there's a little A icon. You're gonna click on that icon and you're gonna see a cursor bar in here, right? You can move the cursor bar, right? And you can actually change the font color if you want. I'm gonna leave it, just so you guys can see, well, let's leave it white and I'll just bring it down down here. Um, I can I can make it smaller, right? The font size, I'm gonna make it maybe, let's try 75, right? It's still a little, still a little um, big, but it's okay. Let's try, um, let's try 35, okay. That's more the speed. And you're like, well, that font looks pretty dumb. It looks pretty basic, right? So what you can do is here is go over to your font gallery. And now it has some pretty nice font that I think is pretty nice. You select what look you're going for as far as font goes. Once you find something that you like, you can stick with it. So, uh, you know, that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and double click inside the box. And now I can change it. And I can make it say whatever I want. So I can do happy birthday. If that's what I want to do, hit done. And it turns into a happy birthday. Adjust it. I can keep on doing this wherever I want. So it's super easy to do. You can change the font color. You can change the background color for the font. Um, you know, you can do anything you want. And it's free. So this should be an automatic in wanting to use this. Uh, because literally it's going to save you a lot of money and it's going to save you a lot of time. Once you're satisfied with this, um, with this, well, before I do that, I'm going to add a, um, I'm going to add a logo. So to add a logo, what you want to do is go over to manage design and you're going to hit manage stickers. And it's going to ask you where, where do you want to manage it from? I want to use my logo. So my logo is out of my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click in this box. And once I double click, bam, it opens up that same folder again. I'm gonna use the TouchPix logo, hit open, and then hit upload. And you see it pop up here to the left. If I click on it, it's gonna put it on the screen. You can resize it you know, and then reposition it wherever it is that you want to put it, right? I'm just kind of showing you that you can do it anywhere, really. Once you're satisfied with this, with this design and you want to get up and go, 
Now you're going to hit add it to event, add to event. And it's that easy. You just added this design to the event we just worked on. So now you log out. And we go back over to touch picks. And we're just going to confirm that everything is in there already. Uh, one moment, DJ. So sorry to interrupt. Um, sure. But I'm getting a lot of uh, direct messages. Everyone, this webinar will be um, available for you to review later. We DJ does kind of go over the designer portion um, a little faster than the other portions because we are not designers. We just want to give you an overview of what that designer tool can do. Um, please feel free to play with it yourself. Watch the webinar again later. Watch um, a previous webinar. Um, consult a graphic designer, but we aren't graphic designers, so we don't really go into super detail um, of how to create an overlay. Yeah, thanks for that, Tia. Yeah, and that's something that we just provide as a tool. So definitely. So log back into TouchPix and I just want to make sure that my overlay is there. So this is the event that we're working on. And if everything looks like it's filled in, I'm going to click on overlays and I should see it there. And there it is. There's that design. So I know it's there. I know it was loaded properly. So now there's only thing I need to do is activate the event. But before I show you that too, if you guys paid attention to every single intricate detail that we went through right now to create the event, I get questions like, do I have to do that every single time? No, you do not. You don't have to go through that every single time. The event that we just created, if you're happy with those settings and you're happy with what you want to do moving forward, for the next event, you don't have to go through every single setting. For the next event, what you can do here is if you go over to where it says manage, you can click on manage. There's this middle tab right here that says duplicate event, right? And I'm just gonna do it so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna duplicate the event. You can rename it and I'm gonna now name it, uh, you know, well, I'll leave it, but I'll leave it as copy, but you can rename it something else because it might be a second event for you, right? So what this does is that it copies, it copies all the settings from that prior event to this event, right? All you would need to do now from this new event that we just duplicated is go into manage, edit. There's two things that you need to do. You would probably change your audio track, right? That's important. And the other part that you would need to do is go back into designer and change the overlay because obviously it's now a different event. Every other setting will remain the same and that's kind of a quick little cheat code to avoid going through this whole setup every single time. I would prefer if you go through the setup three or four times before you start using du duplicate events so you can get familiar. But I understand, you know, people just want, you know, uh, they want to be efficient and they want to learn things quickly. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to scan into this QR code right now. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you I'm going to show you what that's going to look like. Give me one second here. I'm going to go back into the screen mirroring portion of my uh, phone. Here we go. Sorry, sorry about my dog. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna show you. I'm actually gonna show you something because I'm gonna actually activate it from an iPad. Uh, so you guys can see everything. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to turn on my camera. There it is. This is my iPad. As you can see, my daughters also use it because there's a lot of games on there. Um, here's TouchPix. I'm going to go ahead and activate TouchPix here. As you can see, it's asking me if I want to um, let TouchPix access to the YouTube, uh, Bluetooth. I'm going to hit yes. And all you do here is the following. You're gonna, you're gonna hit activate event, right? 
I'm gonna hit activate event. It's gonna ask you a couple questions. Do you wanna activate it from a sharing station or do you wanna activate it from a, um, um, as a regular event? And actually the iPad, I wanna show you guys how to do the sharing station. So I'm actually gonna use this iPhone um, to activate the normal event. Let me move this iPad to the side real quick. And what you do is hit an activate event. I want to activate this iPhone as a normal activate event. So hit active. It's asking me for permissions for the main camera. I'm going to hit yes. And because I can't show you my computer screen because I'm screen mirroring, I took a picture on my other phone of the QR code and I'm just going to scan it like so. It says recognized event. It's loading the event. So it's asking for permissions for my local network. I'm gonna hit yes, okay. Asking permissions for microphone, hit okay. Permissions to store it on my camera roll, allow access to all photos. And this is the question for the person asking me about the uh, Apple TV not displaying correctly. Make sure that you allow your phone to install this, uh, this resource. If you hit cancel and you don't allow, more than likely you won't, your Apple TV will not work how it should. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna let it download the resources. While it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my iPad, right? I'm gonna grab my iPad and I'm gonna hit activate event. And then I'm gonna hit um, activate sharing station because my iPad is gonna be for sharing station asking for camera permissions. And I'm actually gonna scan the same QR code, wherever the camera is, where's the camera? Oops, I have it backwards. So I'm gonna scan the same QR code. Where, where is the camera on this thing? Okay, here we go, sorry about that. Recognize the vet. So sharing station for the iPad, normal event for the, um, for the iPhone. Any questions up until then, right? Now I'm gonna step it up a bit and I'm gonna go into some, uh, some settings on the iPhone, right? First of all, the iPhone, I, uh, for whatever reason I had, I chose the, the color red. as my buttons, I don't know why I did that, but let me change that to white, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I did that, how I'm gonna do that to change it back to white. So what I'm gonna do is go into manage, edit event. Anytime you're gonna do a, a small change, you can edit, you can go back into your screen here and I'm gonna find out why I chose red. So see the button color is red. I'm gonna go ahead and select it to white. And after that, I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom and then hit submit again. Change it back to white. And all I have to do now is hit refresh. So there's a menu button right here on the top left-hand side. And I'm gonna hit refresh event, hit yes. And then you're gonna see those, uh, now it turned it white, see? so that's kind of a quick way to do last minute edits. So what I want you guys to understand is when you're using your iPhone, your menu up here, you're gonna to need to do a couple of things for the first time. You're gonna click on the menu. You're gonna click on settings. From settings, um, you're gonna scroll down to where it says compress. By default, it's set to medium quality. I wanna set it to ultra high quality, right? Ultra high quality is great quality. Um, I will share the following, but I will not recommend it if you don't know what you're doing. If you want the best quality possible, first of all, make sure that your internet speed is capable of, of doing that. If you want the best quality, you're gonna see an option here that, um, let me see. that says apply compress. 
If I remove apply compression, it means you're getting the original video, but it's gonna give you a warning. It says turning this off creates large video files. Uploading and sharing these files require very fast upload speed. If you don't know what you're doing, do not use this option. If you know what you're doing and you want absolutely best quality, that's the way to do it, okay? Also note that there's a speed test built into TouchPix now, right? The speed test is just to see where you're at with your speed. It says network speed test. I'm gonna tap on it and I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna test my speed real quick. And it's gonna tell me what my current speed is here. This shouldn't um, alert you whether or not your events, um, you know, you're gonna have issues with your event, maybe because you're in a uh, poor cell phone area, or maybe the Wi-Fi at the venue is just not that great. So by doing a speed test, it's gonna tell you kind of where you're at. So for me, that's pretty good, right? It's almost 400 downloads. I'm looking at the upload. Upload is what matters. The download, I don't really care so, uh, so much for. But for 20 upload, I think I can get away with that with even um, losing the compression. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is. This is what you do in that session screen. You toggle to the right. Make sure, you know, no printer is selected, obviously. Then you go over to camera. For people that are using uh, iPhones, the camera needs to be selected to the rear camera or the back camera. The back camera is the most important camera. You need an iPhone 11, 12, or 13 because those iPhones have image stabilization. It has ultra wide lens and they're the best iPhones for video capture, right? You can also use GoPro or a DSLR. I'll be using a GoPro today, but I'm gonna, my setup is geared towards a GoPro, but if you follow along, my settings are for iPhone. So, um, you know, if you're using an iPhone right now, continue following, everything's still the same for you. The bottom box here, you're gonna see some, some rectangles and I need to go into the rectangle where it says lens type. Right now it's set to wide. You need to make it ultra wide. If you don't have ultra wide, more than likely your phone is older than the iPhone 11 and it won't work, right? You will be able to record, except your videos will look like they're zoomed in. So I want to activate the ultra wide lens. It's gonna give me a warning that I have to change the slow-mo speed. So I'm gonna click understood. Then the next step is slow-mo speed. I'm gonna click on that box here. And the tab that I'm looking for is the following. This is something new. I guess you don't, it gives you two choices now. 1920 by 1080 at 120 frames per second. I'm gonna click Okay, that's what you want, the 1920 by 1080, 120 FPS. Once you're done there, then we're gonna go to the right and we're gonna be here where it says video effects. So for people that <clears throat> wanna learn how to add free music that TechFix gives you with no added fees, uh, you can load up to three effects. If I tap add effect, what I wanna scroll down to on this list is an item called music, right? From music, I'm gonna click done. You're gonna see the music tab pop up in the gray box. Once it's in the gray box, I'm gonna tap on music and it's giving me a little prompt saying, in order to use this effect, you need to download the file. So I'm gonna click okay. And now it's downloading free music files, 14 free tracks that TouchPix will allow you to use. And I'm gonna click file number six. I don't even know what that sounds like, but it goes in bold, okay? Now I'm gonna add two more effects. Right, so I'm gonna hit add effect. I'm gonna add a different effect. I'm gonna add something that Tia just started using the black and white portrait, right? So this effect, I'm gonna hit done. Once I click done on this effect, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the black and white portrait. You're gonna see this timeline open up at the bottom. If you leave it as is, it means that that effect is gonna be applied on the entire video. That's not what I want. I want that effect to be applied at a certain position of the video. So I'm gonna drag this dot 
to the right, 0.55, and then I'm going to drag this dot to the left. At 0 0.65, I just want that effect to be applied at that moment. So for me, that's okay. I'm going to add one more effect. And let's add a, let me see, let's add a, let's add a rotate in there. Let's, let's rotate two. Same thing with the rotate. I'm going to click on rotate two. The timeline's going to open up. I'm going to move the timeline 0 0.3 to 0.4. I'm happy with that. I've had my, my effects loading and I'm pretty much ready to go, right? But I'm going to now for iPhone users, stop. You're good to go. Hit go back and start recording. If you're a GoPro user, this is where you're going to have to take a couple extra steps. If you're a GoPro user, I have my GoPro right here. Just as a demo, I actually plug in my GoPro to a battery pack. It's a small little battery pack that, you know, it's actually smaller than a cell phone. It's probably the size of a mouse, super small. And what I do with this battery pack, it powers my GoPro. Let me turn this on real quick. Okay, so my GoPro is now on, I think. Give me a sec here. Sorry about that. Okay, my GoPro is now on. So for the GoPro users here, if I tap on my screen, Why is my screen turning black? Sorry, it's a little difficult to do things with one hand. Okay, if I tap on my screen right here, it'll actually tell you that my GoPro settings are, uh, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so because it doesn't have a battery, it's asking me to update the date and time. I'm gonna just set it manually. Um, just making some stuff up real quick. So your settings for your GoPro need to be at 1080 by 120. I also recommend that for now, turn on the, the stabilization on your GoPro. This is a GoPro 10, right? And once you're gonna connect it, uh, I always do it this way because I've had the best luck this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down, oops. Scroll down and to the right. Mine's a GoPro 10. I'm going to go to connections. And I'm going to hit connect device through quick app, but I'm not going to use the quick app. I'm going to go over to touch picks now. From touch picks, I'm going to go into the camera setting. And I'm going to tap on uh, GoPro. And I'm going to hit connect to GoPro. And it found my GoPro. Now it's doing the connection process. Now it's asking if I want it to pair. I'm hitting yes. It says connection successful on the GoPro. Right. And it's asking to join the GoPro network. And it's already connected. Okay. So Sorry, uh, DJ, this was on your, um, so you connected it on your GoPro and then now you're connecting it on your iPhone, right? So no, the GoPro, I just, I just told it I was going to connect it through the GoPro app. And then I went over to the TouchPix app to make the actual connection. On your iPhone. Correct. Give me one second here. I did something I shouldn't have done. I tried to check connection speed, but it's not going to give me a, uh, a speed because that Wi-Fi is connected to the GoPro. So let it do its thing real quick. Uh, 
So let me see if this works. Oh, it does work, okay. Okay, so before I, I do this now, I'm gonna turn my, my, my iPhone in landscape mode and then what I'm gonna do, and sorry, because I got a lot of devices here. And it's hard to do everything with one hand. But what I'm gonna do here is, let me see here. I'm gonna go over to the sharing station, right? You can barely see where it says gallery because this one's still red. I didn't refresh this one. So I'm gonna tap on gallery. You're gonna see the S right there with, with the red S. I'm gonna tap on the S and I'm gonna hit activate receiver. Now it turned into a white S, okay? So now for my phone, I'm gonna go into gallery Tap on the S and I'm gonna hit activate sender. That's the name of my iPad. I'm gonna click on the, the name of the iPad and it says success, it's connected. That is green and the one on my iPad is green. So I know that the connection is good. From your iPad, don't touch your iPad no longer. Your iPad is just a sharing station. From your iPhone, this is what's gonna control the GoPro. And now I'm ready to do uh, some recording for my GoPro. Okay, so I'm going to hit record. You guys heard the beat. There's the live view. It's recording. I'm actually just waving my hand in front of the GoPro, right? You guys can see the back of the GoPro. You guys can see the back of the GoPro. And once it's done recording, it's processing the media. And again, it's processing the original media without... Um, without any compression because that's the function that I'm using. It's cropping and resizing, adjusting the speed, adding the boomerang, and it should- PJ, I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, when, I was, when I was syncing it, um, what I noticed is that it only said online sync. Why is that? You're syncing what? The, the iPad. When I was when I was syncing the the uh, iPhone with the um, with the sharing station. Yeah, I mean, you if yours, you, you mean yours doesn't say gallery. No, like it doesn't allow me to select the gallery, like S and like all that other stuff that you showed. It only yeah. says online sync. So that means that your your gallery, you probably turned that you off. Missed you it. Check it on. Yeah. Sorry. Your gallery. You missed a step. You missed a step. Yeah. So when you're setting up on the computer, when you're setting up touch pigs, there's a there's a box that says in app gallery. If you accidentally left that off you won't be able to do this. That needs to be checked on. So as you can see, uh, I just did a session, it recorded. I'm gonna go to this gallery here. It's there on my phone. And if I go over to the gallery on the iPad, look it, it's on the iPad now. So if this was my sharing station in real life, customers will come to this iPad, they'll tap on the, 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 the thumbnail and they're gonna look at the video. And you can see this video is actually super clear considering that it's a little dark in this room. Um, this one here, I think is connected to internet. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this up. Tell me if you guys at home are able to download that QR code. I'm gonna try it with a different phone that I have. So I'm trying it with this phone here. I'll take it off. Yeah, so it's, it already made it up because I got it on my phone here. So yeah, if you hit play on here, you're using internet to play it back. So you need to actually download it to get it at, at its uh, original quality. Does that make sense? Were you guys able to download it at home? 
or at least grade. yes cool yes very cool cool so in a nutshell, that is how you connect your GoPro, how you share it with your sharing station, and how the iPhone controls the GoPro. You can just walk around with your iPhone wirelessly, and that'll trigger your recording, right? So any last minute questions before we end today's webinar? I do. I have one. Sure. Uh, I was just asking Tia, like when you complete a event and close it out, is there is there a converter where you can go in there and change the the effects afterwards, like you can do with the say for instance, I had to change my music on a video, and and I got a link where I can go in there and change to do that. But can you change the effects on the event once you closed it out? Yeah, I answer that question um, in the chat. That's a you would need to use a third party app. We that isn't a touch picks, you know, matter. Okay. But I do see other people had questions, so we want to get to them before we end. But yeah, there's a few third party apps. If you're in the Facebook user group, if you use the search tool, you'll uh -huh. see a whole bunch of different after effects sites people recommend. Okay, thank you. Cool. Any other questions before we end? <laughs> what you said, ooh. <laughs> What's that? I was just laughing how you said that. You said, ooh. <laughs> uh, let me let me go back on mute because I you weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I see a few people direct messaging me about scan picks and connection issues. We have um uh, a few webinars on on scan picks and then also what can possibly cause um your your connection issues it may be trying to pick up and connect to different um routers in your actual device settings you want to make sure you um disable the option um what is the dj that it searches for networks so that it connects you want to have the option that it x you to connect to a different um, network instead of it doing it automatically. That can make a big difference um, because with scan picks, you know, it's not an active internet source. So it is gonna to try to search and find one. So you have to make sure that you um, kind of adjust those things. Um, but if you give us a, a call and support, I put the support information in, um, in the chat, we can kind of give you an overview um, of that, of those kind of troubleshooting things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll always look for a memorized network first. And sometimes you get issues where maybe you're trying it at home and you're logging into your Scampix router, but the system's detecting that that router has no internet. So it's defaulting back to your home network and you're not even realizing that. So always try to forget your networks or you can just reset your network settings. That way when you're starting from scratch, you know that it's gonna work. Uh, typically that happens at home when you're testing, but when you're out there in the middle of nowhere trying to use this, it'll definitely work. I have time for two more questions and then we're going to call it a wrap. Anybody else have questions? Are you guys good? All right. Um, I had a direct message about GoPro. So if you're using a GoPro, you need to have um, two devices essentially. And then if you want to use a sharing station then three, so you need to have an iOS device that controls the GoPro. So whether that's an iPhone or an iPad that actually has the TouchFix app on it, that's controlling your GoPro. So if you want to use a sharing station, then that means you'll need a third device. So if you're using a GoPro, you need to use, you, you you have to use two devices. You can't control or utilize the um, TouchPix app with just the GoPro. It needs to be controlled by iOS device. Yeah, and and truthfully, that's not a flaw on TouchPix. It's a flaw on the GoPro because GoPro doesn't let you share a Wi-Fi connection, right? It's either you're going to be able to connect to the GoPro via Wi-Fi, but you can't connect to the internet. Uh, so yeah, you, you really... Uh, you really want to use a GoPro, you need, you know, th like Tia said, three devices, your GoPro, you know, whatever device is controlling that GoPro, and then whatever device you're sharing with. 
All right, one more question. And then, uh, like I said, uh, thank you guys for taking the time. I know it's pretty late on the East, uh, but definitely want to be here to support you guys. Maybe I'll do a different ScanPix webinar coming up soon. Uh, these webinars have been a little small size, so I think they're more manageable. Uh, but let me know if that's something that really interests. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of um, DMs on, on uh, Facebook myself from people wanting to explore scam picks and a little confused about it, but I'll take one more question. And after that, I uh, just want to wish everybody a good night. All right. Sounds like everybody's got it. So thank yep. you guys. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, catch us on the next one. Thank you so much. Call the support line if you need any help and get out there and make that money. Thank you so much. Thanks. Dale. Thank you. How do we get a copy of